be showing you how to prepare and print with polycaprolactam. Some of the equipment I'll be using is an Engine SR. We're going to be using acrylic as our build plate. Uh, further build plate options we've spoken on later. Our head right now is a Krakatoa using a 0.5 millimeter head with a heated nozzle accessory. Um, the heated nozzle and the reservoir should be at the same temperature throughout the experiment. This is just to limit the temperature gradient throughout. It is advised, not necessary, but if you do not use it, you should be running at higher temperatures in the reservoir so the ambient temperature can spread out um, to the needle and keep it at a melting temperature. I usually run this at 100, 120 with a 0.5 millimeter head, usually 100, um, but can also be 120 if you want to do one ease of uh, flow. If you're doing a smaller head, raise the temperature to about 120 to 140. Uh, usually you should remain below 160 as the O-rings start to melt around 160 to 170. Um, so remain below that range, but know that your nozzle head will affect what temperature you'll be printing at. We'll also be using a vacuum generator. This vacuum generator was used um, in our viscosity test setup and viscosity test cleanup videos. If you want to see another example of how it's used, it comes with the plunger and the black cap as well. I'll be using a 2.5 and 3 millimeter hex screw. I'll be using a funnel. This is optional, but it helps um, put in the polycaprolactone into our reservoir in the middle. For cleanup, we'll be using tweezers. During the print, we're going to be using two quiet storms. This is the older version. You can slide on the far side. Some advantages it holds is its ability to be aimed wherever it needs to, but it puts out a little less. It's an older version with an older fan. This is the newer version with more pointed direct flow. It will be sitting here once we finish the vacuum generator, and we'll have airflow from both directions. We'll also be using a 7 millimeter wrench. Heat resistant gloves or any heat resistant material is useful when handling the heat of Krakatoa, as we will have to. We will also need a cup of some sort, but the material itself doesn't matter, just about this size works. A um, gram scale balance, it could be a kitchen gram scale balance, just want to know how much polycaprolactone we're working with. And also the star of the show, polycaprolactone itself. First, we're going to measure out our material. I like to stay within five to eight grams of polycaprolactone. Gives me a good space when I'm pulling a vacuum later. Doesn't really clog up anything. It's not just does. It's not overflowing within my main Krakatoa reservoir. From there, take the reservoir, insert the plunger on one side. I usually do it so it's just about flush with the back end, right here. I like to use a funnel, not necessary, but it is recommended. Put the funnel over, pour in our material. Okay, about all 5.8 grams in there. Put a cap over the top, excuse me, not a cap. We'll use the vacuum generator first. Place it on top, then seal it with its own cap. We will not cap this bottom side, just the top side. Now I like to turn the pressure going through my vacuum generator to about 90 PSI. It sets a very quick vacuum, completely vacates all the air in here. The idea of pulling the vacuum before we melt this is that when you're melting this, if you melt it right now with the granules, the air in between each granule and the little pockets and spaces in between will form the bubbles as this item, as the PCL melts down on top of it. The idea with this is you pull all the air before, so even when it melts and there's space in between, there's no air in between, it's just empty space or very, very close to empty space. And when it melts down, it melts on that empty space, causing no air bubbles and makes a more seamless transition to a pure um, gradient of PCL. So I'm gonna turn on the air pressure. You don't need to go too long, it'll pull a vacuum very quickly, especially with this small space and a 90 PSI. What you will notice is that the back end will, plunger will push in a bit as it was being pulled in and there's empty space. Um, that is why we didn't cap this or stop it at all, because otherwise it would have been held back and you really just had a very tight situation. So now this is all flushed together. We're going to continue with the vacuum, but put it into the Krakatoa and let it melt. So even if there's any residual air left or anything else you need to do, it'll keep pulling it up 
At this point, I do not like to do 90 PSI when you're melting it. Because if you do 90 PSI, you'll be pulling molten um, PCL into your vacuum generator tube. 30 PSI is fine with me. If you get any, it's very easy to clean off. Just 90 usually gets it a little further up and makes it more difficult. Not a necessity either way, just a preference. And I would also like to note normally, I wouldn't stop in between. I just wanted to stop to explain. Turn the vacuum generator back on. I set my temperature to 120. Um, it was already preheated in this case, so the, this point was a little bit hot. When you let it melt, I would like to let it melt for about 20 to 30 minutes. Normally, it'll be melted in about 10 to 15, but I don't want to open this again to expose to anything else. So I want to keep it, I want to be as sure as possible when dealing with this situation. So 20 to 30 minutes, possibly more if you're comfortable, if you have the time. Remember 30 PSI for this one. Okay, 30 minutes has passed. We pull the vacuum, we've melted it. We're now gonna be putting on our safety gloves for or any really heat resistant material. Some things I wanna point out before I take this out, key notes when you're using the viscosity or the vacuum pump is you wanna keep the Teflon wire verticals or as vertical as possible so it doesn't cause a leak at the very top. Also vacuum generators will cause condensation so you might wanna put a couple of underneath to catch any drips. Um, the two main points you really need. Now we can just pull this guy out. Feed his tail through. Wonderful. Okay. We're going to move this cap. You might be able to see some PCL stuck, not too much. The inside looks good. This is our adapter for the Krakatoa. We can put that in now. And what I want to do before placing the needle on is use a seven millimeter wrench. And we're gonna twist this bottom piece after moving the gold section up. We're gonna twist the bottom. And basically we're gonna screw the PCL to the very top. So that's more closer to being flush with the uh, needle when they do set, so there's not a huge bubble in between the two. The bolt is all set up top. We put a cap on the back. Now we want to spin this clockwise. All right, PCL is flush with the top. Get our needle. You might want to flatten out the, uh, the tip of that the little lump you might be getting. Set the needle in, squeeze out any air on the side. Try to make sure you get it as much time to escape. And now I'll close it. Okay. Now we have the needle sitting right on top of the PCL layer. Any air should escape out the top. We cap it again. Beautiful. This is the full section we'll need. Um, what we'll want to do now, but I probably should have done anyways, but the, my needle was a bit, one issue I had right there was that I pl uh, flushed the PCL a little too high up. And so that it was just kind of pushing the needle back out a bit, made a little, little wobbly in the end. So I put the cap here so I make sure the needle's set. Now I can go in from below. We can lower the bed a little more. underneath catch that bottom get the gold sections flush get our cap there we go put it on over set the cap and we're good we no longer need the vacuum generator this wire is just gonna weigh everything you can remove it all the way So one key note that we've mentioned in the past video is that when you're dealing with the Krakatoa, especially with um, highly viscous materials that need to be fully melted, we want to keep the reservoir as far up as possible. You see how I can kind of make, 
we set in and kind of make slight adjustments up and down, up and down. We want it all the way up so the needle is as close to the heating unit as possible. We will be using a heated nozzle accessory, um, but the entire point is to limit, limit the empty space not getting heated on your, limit the surface area not getting heated. Um, Cause that'll cause a temperature gradient. And then all of a sudden you're pushing PCL that's at the tip, you know, 20 degrees Celsius less than in your reservoir. So we're gonna tighten our reservoir, tighten it very well. We don't want this spinning at all. That is mentioned in the heated nozzle accessory video. Also here, just so you can get a proper extrusion. We're gonna set our heated nozzle in. We're gonna add the second quiet storm with its extension. The extension I mean there's just a longer section right here your quiet storm might be a bit shorter if so ask for the extension we'll print off a new extension now this is completely set we're going to turn on the heated nozzle accessory again we want the reservoir and the heated nozzle accessory to be at the same temperature so at this point they're 120 um let it heat up the heated nozzle heats up very quickly once that's heated up, we're just gonna make sure we can extrude, get, we're getting some output, and then we can really start printing from there. One thing of note, the material you use is very important. Um, I'm using acrylic right now. That's what this red bed right here is. You can use almost any polymer-based build plate. Um, PEI sheets work fine. You can use glass, but you want to spray down Aquanet. Aquanet is a polymer-based um, like spray. You can also work with polycarb uh, polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is a bit harder to get off. Um, that bottom layer, when it's stuck on a polycarbonate, really stays. Um, but we have some tricks that I can show you in another section of the video that help you get off objects. But acrylic is my favorite. Um, Aquanet gets kind of sticky and everywhere, but it works. Um, you can do it on the materials. I just highly recommend using a polymer-based um, build plate. The steel, like this hotbed, doesn't really work very well, even if you get close. It really takes acrylic to come out well.